name is Craig Dahlgren. I'm the executive director for Perry Institute for Marine Science. Stony coral tissue loss disease is one of about a dozen or so diseases that corals get in the Caribbean. It's the newly discovered one. It was only discovered about five years ago off of Florida. It spread throughout the Florida reef tract and now has been spreading over the past few years to other parts of the region, uh, including the Bahamas. We first found it off of Grand Bahama back in early 2020. And since then, we found it in other parts of the Bahamas as well. So it has spread. It spreads easily. It kills rapidly and it kills about half the different reef building coral species we have. So um, it can have a devastating impact on reefs when it gets there. A lot of the reefs that we're visiting on this trip are ones where we have information from before stony coral tissue loss disease arrived or right after we first discovered it. And then we're seeing how a year later or so, how it's impacted those reefs, how it's uh, changed the coral communities on those reefs. On this expedition, we're looking at what effects Hurricane Dorian had on reefs around Abaco and Grand Bahama, and what effects a new outbreak of stony coral tissue loss disease has had on reefs around Grand Bahama, where we've seen it. We haven't seen it in Abaco yet, and hopefully we won't see it. We have uh, six people on the science team. Will Green is doing a lot of the, the photo work, so he'll be doing photographs of reefs in water that we can then stitch together to form these photo mosaics and three-dimensional models of the reef. He's also doing some drone work where we're doing the same sort of thing, but from the air over larger scales. Dr. Krista Sherman is surveying corals and their health on the reefs. She's being assisted with that by Lily Haynes. Dr. Valeria Pizarro is looking at what is living on the seafloor. She's being assisted by Maya Gomez. My role generally is, in addition to coordinating everything, uh, looking at the fish communities on these reefs and see what fish are there and how healthy their populations are. So far, we've been diving uh, along Grand Bahama and then Southern Abaco. And to tell you the truth, it's been like night and day. Um, both areas were affected by Hurricane Dorian and we were here right after the hurricane, so we know how that affected them. But the big difference, um, the reefs around Abaco where we are now are pretty similar to they were then. They haven't declined any further. I just came up from a dive at Sandy Point Reef uh, in the southern part of Abaco. Uh, it was pretty cool. The corals here are among the healthiest we've seen so far on this trip. Really good diversity. Um, some of the uh, corals that have been outplanted look really good too. Some of the elkhorn and staghorn corals, so that was really great. The reefs around Grand Bahama, though, that were infected with stony coral tissue loss disease after the storm, after our surveys, um, have changed dramatically, where there's several species that were once coral species that were once dominant on those reefs just a little over a year ago are now almost entirely gone. And so the disease has had a huge impact even bigger than the hurricane on, on those reefs at least. There's still a bit of damage as I can see from Hurricane Dorian. Some uh, corals that have been fragmented and toppled over uh, on the bottom. Some of them are starting to regrow in that position. Um, it's clear that sterny coral tissue loss disease has moved through this area as well. There was lots of um, dead brain corals. With stony coral tissue loss disease, we have two strategies. One, we want to stop the spread. So we want to try to prevent it moving from one reef or one island to another uh, in the ballast water or bilge water of a boat or on your dive gear or fishing gear or whatever. So disinfecting and making sure you're not transporting it from one place to another. The second thing we can do is to treat individual colonies that are infected. We're not curing them, but we're preventing that infection from spreading any further and preserving their life. And we do this with uh, use of antibiotics in a special paste that we can apply to corals. And sometimes you have to do it over and over and over again. 
and eventually you'll stop the infection in its tracks and hopefully it won't get reinfected. There's a number of coral species here that are important architectural engineers of the reef. So they build the reef, but they're critically endangered species. They've been hit hard by disease and climate change and other things. And what we're doing to try to solve that is by growing them in a captive setting and reintroducing them to the wild like you do with pandas or cheetahs. So we're growing a couple of the faster growing branching coral species, staghorn and elkhorn coral in nurseries, and then we're outplanting them to reefs. And here in southern Abaco, we've done this on about six reefs. We've outplanted thousands of corals. And on this trip, we'll be coming back to monitor how those corals are doing. Are they growing the way we expect them to do? Are they becoming infected with disease or having other problems to see how effective our restoration efforts are?